This is Team 19, and our product is called the Interactive Physics Classroom. It was designed in part by me, Leo Yeo, Ryan Brode, and Katie Duncan. So our objective for this project, product is for the Interactive Physics Classroom to be an interactive way for students to learn and reinforce physics concepts. Students will have to have be interact with the device in order to, comp in, to learn more about the concepts in that there will be three obstacles placed throughout the course with the ping pong ball, the students must navigate through the course by correctly inputting three uh, inputs into, uh, into the obstacles, otherwise the ping pong ball will stop and those students will have to start over. If the inputs are uh, inputted correctly, however, the ping pong ball will proceed throughout the machine and exit at the end. The three educational objectives that we have in mind for this product are Newton's laws of motion, projectile motion, and the conservation of energy and momentum. As for the product planning that led to our decision making, we first decided that our product should be a derivative of ex existing products, as we decided that there is a common platform that we need to address, which is teaching high school students physics concepts. However, the existing products we felt weren't enough to meet the requirements of today's society, and we decided to create a new product that will help meet those needs instead. As for our competitive strategies, we decided on that of a customer focus as we decided that the customer's needs and wants are the most important uh, objective in our planning. As for our secondary focus, uh, we decided on cost leadership as we wanted our product to be made from commonly available materials such as cardboard, foam board, or PVC pipe so that the end product will be easily assemblable and disassemblable and that if it does malfunction, no expensive parts go broken or missing and that it's easily replaceable and easy to fix. Okay, so after the focus and competitive strategy were determined, we made a Gantt chart to help guide us through this project. Um, we started with a project planning phase. We made a summary. Um, within that, the tasks included identification of target specifications, um, literary searches, and concept generation, which was a main task for us. Um, through this concept generation, it kind of sets up the rest of our project and where we're going and what devices we'll be using to complete our project. Um, critically, the, our critical tasks become the concept generation as that sets up the rest of the project and then the actual design for manufacture, which that will allow us to complete our project. And then at the end, our final assembly, giving the customers a final product will be key. So, so as we said before, our product is very customer focused and in order to get those inputs, we interviewed 11th and 12th grade high school physics students and teachers and we decided that they would be a good customer to focus on because they are the people who are actually using the product. Even though they may not be buying it, they are influencing the people who will. And so here is the summary of all of the interviewed interviewees. And from those interviews, we learned that our product needs to demonstrate hard physics concepts in an easy and visual way. And some of the dislikes of the current product is that they're difficult to use or put together. And so we need to build a product that demonstrates the concepts at hand easily and not overcomplicate them. So our specifications for our product become a uh, the device needs to fit on a 20 by 30 inch foam board, uh, so all three tasks must be, of course, fit on all of those and be able to complete itself. Um, it must consist of at least three obstacles, and each obstacle will require three faults or three user inputs, uh, allowing it to continue. Uh, these obstacles will be moving a ping pong ball from the beginning to the end.
and at least one of these obstacles has to be autonomous using like an Arduino. So in our case, we are looking at possibly a winch system where the uh, Arduino will control the winch winding up the ping pong ball in some way. And then, so these specifications are matched with uh, the customer needs. And through this uh, quality of function deployment chart, we uh, come up with the relationships. Like uh, an example here is assistance in teaching physics concepts is highly related to the product consists of several physics concepts. Um, all of these needs are matched with the specification and then these specifications are determined, or these specifications are given metrics, values at which they can be measured in order to determine their uh, technical importance. So through this QFD, we can see that the uh, uh, allowing students inputs is uh, highly important for our, for our successful project. Uh, this will allow the students get the, to get the most out of our product. deciding how much our product would cost and the break-even points, we researched the cost of the Arduino and ma basic materials that our product would be made out of, and so that cost of materials came out to be around $130, added with the fixed cost of $10,000 a year. You can see the total cost is in red projected and from that we set a constant price of 250 so when those two lines intersect we get the break-even point of about 83.31 which is rounded to 84 products sold to break even because you can't really buy part of the product. So in summary, the interactive physics classroom is our answer to a more interactive and engaging physics high school experience. Uh, we, we want our learning objectives to be that of projectile motion, Newton's laws of motion, and conservation of energy slash momentum, which is involving kinetic potential energy and that of momentum. Our, customer, our competitive strategy will focus on customer focus and cost leadership. And our economic projection will we will break even on the sale of about the eighty fourth unit or so.